Hello, happy Thursday. If you are new here, my name is Susan Jones. I am a first grade teacher up in Massachusetts. And if you've been watching my videos, then welcome back. I love to just share a little bit about what we're doing here in first grade. I like to share different activities and things that I find uh, and just kind of take you along with me. So if you're ready to dive into this video, let's give it a thumbs up. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and let's dive right in. All right, as you can see by the title of today's video, I wanted to share just some of my favorite geometry for first grade um, activities that I enjoy. We are actually finishing up our addition and subtraction unit this week, and then next week we are diving into geometry. So I wanna kinda go over what lessons we teach in first grade, some of my favorite activities that I plan on using, uh, and then kind of where we're headed. So I also just wanna point out things that drive me crazy. Uh, in my classroom as a type A teacher, but my students are finishing up some projects back there for our EL education pilot. Um, so right now my back counter is filled with a bunch of clutter, beautiful projects, but what looks to me like clutter. So having a hard time with that, but that's okay. Um, but yeah, let me pull down my geometry bin. And since I'm starting to plan out some of the lessons, let's take a look at what we're doing. All right, so upon further inspection, the only thing I saved last year that I had laminated were these little uh, pattern block challenge build it mats from Pocket of Preschool. So it was the only thing in the bucket. So uh, I didn't really start organizing everything last year for those of you that are new, was my first year back in the classroom after a very long uh, little hiatus. So I was storing whatever I had laminated and really wanted to keep year to year. And I wasn't sure exactly what would be in the bucket. Little did I know, it was not much. So let's pull up my slides from last year because that I saved and let's see kind of where we started. Actually, first I will, I do have a kind of our scope and sequence for this unit and what we're gonna be teaching. So let's go over that first. All right, so just looking at our kind of scope and sequence and what lessons we're going to be doing over the next, it looks like 12 school days. Um, we do use Math and Focus and this is chapter three. So if you use a different curriculum, you can kind of see how this one compares or if you don't have a curriculum, you can see what our alignment kind of looks like. So we're gonna start off with exploring flat shapes. So we're gonna just recognize them. Uh, this should be a quick and easy kind of review from kindergarten, because they should know a lot of these already. We're going to identify sides and corners, sort the shapes in different ways, and then on day four, we'll actually divide those shapes into equal parts. So we do kind of start the beginning fractions here. And then we will go into exploring solid shapes, so our 3D shapes, recognize them, and then also see how they move in different ways. And then we go into using shapes to make pictures and models. So using flat shapes to make pictures, using solid shapes to make models, and just kind of that composing and decomposing of shapes into other shapes. Seeing shapes around us, so getting to see what these 2D and 3D shapes look like in real life. Uh, then towards the end, we have using flat shapes to make patterns. Um, so recognizing repeating patterns involving flat shapes and then the same thing, but with solid shapes. So that's just kind of the rundown on what lessons we will be teaching. Now, personally, I love teaching these types of units. I love teaching the geometry unit, the measurement unit, and I like how they are kind of sprinkled in between um, some of our heavier units. So we've just finished up, you know, a long time of adding and subtracting. We finished up number sense, and then it feels like we get a little break going into our shapes, right? Shapes are so hands-on, they're fun. We get to see all the different patterns. Students know a lot about them from last year already. Um, you know, shapes are often talked about as early as like Sesame Street, preschool. So kids are pretty familiar with these. They often feel very successful in this unit, which is good. The one hard part of the geometry units in first grade is typically the fractions. So getting them to understand equal and non-equal parts as well as um, halves and quarters, which halves and quarters we don't go into just yet. So yeah, that's kind of the rundown on what we will be doing. So 
Now, let me take a look at some of the activities we are going to do for shapes. Before I dive into all the hands-on activities I like to use in games we play with my students, I do just wanna share one of my favorite ways to help students practice this skill independently. And it also kind of lets me know where they're at and that is through using IXL. Now all my students have IXL on their iPads and it is something that we often do towards the end of a lesson where I will either star a skill so they can work on it. And then when they're finished with that, they can go into IXL games. Now, in case you don't already know, IXL is an online learning program for students in grade kindergarten all the way through 12th grade and it is filled with tons of skill-based review activities games and lessons that parents and teachers can easily assign to their students to help them review different skills let me show you the ones i'm going to use for this upcoming unit one of the many features I love about IXL are these skill plans that go along with your curriculum. You can just go right to textbooks and scroll down to find your curriculum. We are using Math in Focus. I will click on it for grade one. And then I can find my chapter, chapter three, which is Shapes and Patterns. Once I'm here, I can see all of the different lessons and skills that IXL has ready for my students to practice. As I scroll over each one, I can get a quick look at some of the questions that IXL wants to ask them for each skill. This is the one that I thought was most beneficial for my students right now, so I went ahead and start it. And then once it's assigned, students will see questions just like this. And one of the features I also love about IXL is this audio version, so that way students can hear the question even if they can't read it. Which shape has three corners? Once they hear the question, they click on the right answer and submit. This is a great way for students to practice what they've learned and that way I can also see how they're doing. If you wanna try out IXL with your own students or kids at home, they're actually offering a 30 day free trial for teachers and a 25% off the first month or year for parents at home. Whether you're a teacher or a parent, you can take advantage of all of IXL's core subjects like math, science, language arts, just by checking out the link in my description. Hello, surprise, it's the next day. Uh, I was about to share with you some of my favorite hands-on activities and games that we play for shapes, um, but then life got a little crazy yesterday, so I'm gonna do just that. So let me grab some of my favorite activities for 2D and 3D shapes. All right, as far as 2D shapes go, like I said, with geometry, I love to keep it as hands-on as possible. Well, really with any math skill, but this is a favorite of ours. It's called 2D Make a Shape and students will just get a spinner. This is after, of course, we've learned about all of these shapes, what they're named and their attributes. And then they have to go ahead and make the shape. They can do this with straws, like I have in this picture right here. They can do this with Play-Doh. I'm gonna have them do it with Play-Doh. And then I also have yarn that they could do this with as well. So they could try to make it with string too. Another good option for this is, of course, a geo board. Um, and we'll probably play this more than one time. Uh, having them use different ways to make these shapes. And then this side just has the actual picture of the shape, and this one has more of the attributes for them to do. So I also pulled out my, I know I pulled this out earlier to show you and there's barely anything inside. So I can't wait to laminate these and keep these for the next couple of years. So 2D make a shape is a favorite. All right, so when we are talking about teaching shapes, I'm always talking about having students identify the attributes, making sure they can name the shapes, of course, and also talking about non-identifying non attributes, like um, different rectangles can be all different shapes and sizes. It doesn't matter what color they are not different shapes and sizes. <laughs> Actually, it's a very specific shape, um, but they can be different sizes, different colors. So getting students to understand the difference. But another big thing with shapes is having students compose and decompose shapes into other shapes. So for composing shapes, here is a favorite of mine. I'm gonna use my task cards because um, I already have them made, but I also have these right here. These are like free little task cards and they tell them what shape to use, what pattern blocks to use and what shape they are making. Uh, when I show it, mine will be slightly different, but it's basically the same. So for composing shapes, this one is called Build a Shape. And I, of course, will show students how to do this. But at the top, it shows what pattern blocks they're going to need. So they need one rhombus, grab it. And they need four triangles. One, two, three, four. Boom, boom, doing this with one hand is hard. And then they have to try to make a hexagon. So they're gonna have to figure out how to put these shapes together. Of course, you know, I'm a adult professional here, so I know how to do it pretty quickly. But this is actually very tricky for my students to be able to do. So I like to give them a lot of practice with these types of skills. So again, they're gonna make a hexagon here, um, but this time they're gonna make a big hexagon using um, one 
already done hexagon, two trapezoids, and two rhombus. So there's just a bunch of different ones here. Another hexagon, I swear. I swear they're building other things too. Here we go. A rhombus with two triangles. But again, they're very similar to the free cards that I have, so I will link that down below. And these ones are just from my geometry math task cards, which I will also link down below. But composing and decomposing shapes is going to be very important. Now with that last activity, they are mostly taking smaller shapes and turning them into larger shapes. So I also like to have them practice some decomposing as well. Um, and so what I'll do here is I will actually print this out on colored paper. There's a few different shapes here. This one says decompose the square. And I will have students either with scissors, um, but first I have them fold it. So let me tell you, um, I'll have them try to turn this square into some other shapes. So the options here are they can turn it into two triangles, two rectangles, three rectangles, four triangles, or four squares. And they can determine which one they wanna try. And then they fold it first to see if they can make those shapes. And then I actually have them take scissors and cut it out to show how this one big shape can be decomposed into smaller shapes. And then I have it for decompose the rectangle, decompose the hexagon, uh, and then I think I have one more for like a pentagon as well. But yeah, so I will print out those on colored paper and they will kind of get their scissors out, start cutting and decomposing as well. Um, I should mention, because I don't think I said this yet in this video, but as with all of my videos, of course I use, you know, the activities that I have and I've pre-made and spent years making. Um, that does not mean you need to go purchase all of these. You could see very easily that you could just draw a square or a hexagon and you can run it through the copy machine and do the same exact activity. If you have pattern blocks, you can do those composition ones. Look up online some different, you know, composing cards or grab my free ones and print them out and have students just build shapes. Um, same with the 2D make a shape right? You can put up a random spinner online or just call out a shape and have everybody with their Play-Doh or string or whatever they're using make a shape. We can make it easy. All right, so those are some favorites for 2D shapes. For 3D shapes, my absolute favorite is Guess My Shape. So we will do a lot around um, 3D shapes in terms of their attributes. Those are a little trickier with vertices and edges um, and figuring out what the shapes are named and looking at them in real life but I really like to have students feel them. And so what I like to do for this is guess my shape. So after they have learned one, two, three, four, five, six, about the six main ones that we do, um, and we talk about the attributes, they've felt them, they've gotten to see them, I will put them in a bag. Here's a little picture like this. I'll put them in brown paper bags. They have to quietly walk around the room and they'll have to put their hand inside the bag. I'll have a couple of them out that say like A, and they'll have to feel what it is without looking. And then they have to write down or draw, it's up to them, but they can write it down. I'll have an anchor chart at that point where they know the name. They have to write down what shape they think it is. And then after we've done that for all of them, they will come back to the rug and we will reveal and see if they got them correct. And then I'll have them think about too, like if they thought it was a sphere, how did you know it was a sphere? What were some of the things you were feeling during that time? Uh, just using all those words and seeing if they can identify those attributes first. Another easy hands-on activity I like for 3D shapes is called castle building. And all you'll do, I usually do this as like a center. So, um, cause I only have one bin of 3D shapes and I don't want you know everybody to be fighting over them and I want them to be able to make a cool castle. So I'll do this as a center for like eight minutes at a time and that group gets to build a castle using their 3D shape. So they can pose it, they can add whatever they like to it. Um, they like the cones, you know, as the top is at the top of like the sides of the castle. And then when the time is up, they will just take a blank piece of paper. I don't even have a recording sheet for this. And they just have to write down how many of each shape they use. So they have to be able to look at their castle. We take a picture of it. Then they count up all of the shapes that they used and record it. So I could make a recording sheet for that to make it easier. I might have something similar somewhere anyway. Um, maybe I'll look for that, but castle building, easy. All right, so those are some of my favorite hands-on activities for 2D and 3D shapes, and they are all in this unit right here. Um, this is just my hands-on 2D and 3D geometry unit for first grade. So a lot of those activities in recording sheets are straight from there. But then I'll also have students practice with some math games and some task cards. So I wanted to show you a couple of my favorite math games from my print and play pack. The first math game is a very quick roll and cover. This will be cut out of course, and it'll only be half, but students just have a die. They will roll it and it'll tell them how many sides they are looking for. And then they also kind of make it fun with like, remove one of your opponent's pieces, skip your turn. 
and they have to see who can cover up the board. So they're working together. And once the whole thing is covered, they count who has the most cubes on the board and that person wins. So they're just looking for, okay, four sides. What is a shape that has four sides? Plop, I can put my cube on it. Uh, five or six sides. All right, which has five or six sides. I can put one here. So they just go back and forth, rolling and covering. Race to Robot is another favorite of mine. Uh, this is similar, but it's just set up in a different way. So here they are still going to be looking at those attributes or they're gonna see the name of the shape like square, rectangle, and triangle. So they will spin it and then whatever they land on, they each have their own robot. This is with two students. So player one, player two, they have to color in just one section. So if they land on zero sides, they have to find a shape in here and color it in. So they might color in a circle or an oval, any of the circles, just one by one. And then we spin again, five sides. Find a pentagon, boom, color it in. And they go back and forth until they can see who can fill up their robot first. And they can color it however they want, design it however they want, but they can only color in one shape at a time based on the attributes. And last but not least, we have 2D and 3D Find It. And this is going to be a good game for having students practice seeing these shapes in real life. Um, even though, of course, we will do like a 2D, 3D shape hunt where they have to look around the room and find these actually in real life. Uh, but this gives them any more options that they can't see in the classroom. So they will roll the dice. If they get a six, they have to find a cylinder, toilet paper roll, color it in. If they roll a three, they have to color a square like this piece of cheese and color it in and they just go back and forth this can be played uh, by themselves or it can be played with the partner i almost always have them play it with a partner and go back and forth until the timer is up all right so we've got some hands-on activities we have got some games that they're going to play with partners to review those skills and then i also have some task cards that are again um just some review but not just paper pencil they're more um some of them are hands-on like this one right here this one is make me and this one is done with a geo board so students will get geo boards and look at a bunch of elastics and then you can see each card has a little shape there that they have to make now not only do they have 2d shapes but also let me grab one real quick also some of them have a fun little shape to make like a butterfly and so when students get to these ones I like to pop over and just kind of ask them like what shapes did you use to make that butterfly oh I see an oval here in the middle I see a circle here whatever you want to say but um I like to ask them what shapes they're making to do that and then like a leaf how did you make that leaf ask them what shapes they used but then of course they obviously have regular uh, 2D shapes as well. Here is another test card game that I like. It's called Find and Circle. Over in the corner there, you can see the circle that they need to find on their card. Um, so that's the shape, the circle here, triangle here, and a square in this one over here. And they simply have to circle with a dry erase marker all of the real life shapes uh, that have that there. So they'll circle all of them. I already showed you build a shape. And then we also have, I like this one a lot, which does not belong. So let me grab you a card so I can show it to you. These ones need to be better erased, but these ones are for 2D and 3D shapes. And it says, put an X through the one that does not belong. So here we have two cubes and we have a pyramid. So that one would be circled. Let me grab another one. Here we have 2D shapes, two squares and a rectangle. We've got two rhombuses and a hexagon. So they have to kind of look at the attributes of each one and figure out which does not belong and put an X through it. All right, so there were just a bunch of different activities I like for introducing and reviewing both 2D and 3D shapes with my students. I didn't touch too much on fractions just yet. Um, and like I said, that's definitely not everything we're going to do. That was kind of a highlight of some of the activities we will be doing throughout the 12 day unit. So if you watch the videos next week and the week after, I'll definitely get to share more in depth about some of the other activities we're doing as well. And if you have any questions about them or any other fun geometry activities that you like, drop them down in the comments so we can all check them out. So as always, I do hope you enjoyed this video that you could take something from it. Uh, if you did, please give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video. See you in the next one. Bye. Ooh.